Greetings viewers and welcome to our SAGE 200 Fixed Assets Tracking and Reconciliation webinar. The presentation today will include the following. Introduction, setting up of defaults and prerequisites, the reconciliation options, the reconciliation process, instances where there are no variances, situations where locations differ, import variances, asset register variances, and reconciliation by means of units and serial numbers. Now, it's important to understand how vital fixed assets are to any organization. Fixed assets are used to generate revenue for the organization, and therefore it's very important that you maintain control over those fixed assets. In the same way that companies regularly take stock takes and ensure that stock control measures are implemented, the same process should be followed for your fixed assets. Within Sage Turn Revolution, we really have two platforms where you can control your assets. This being the asset tracking feature, as well as the asset reconciliation platform. And those are the two instances we'll be covering in today's presentation. Right, let's get started. Now, as is the case with each model within Sage 200, we have defaults which need to be set up before processing. So under fixed assets, maintenance, we have our defaults. And under the assets tab, we have the ability to implement automatic numbering for our asset tracking sequence. So it's a case of selecting automatic numbering, specifying the prefix and the number of characters to be used in the numbering sequence. Very similar to the setting up of automatic numbering for your source documents, such as invoices, credit notes, et cetera, within Sage 200 Evolution. Right, so once that's been completed, we can then continue. Now, there's just something very important to understand is that the two platforms as I mentioned, or asset tracking and asset reconciliation. Asset tracking can be found under transactions and we've got the ability to start the asset tracking process from there. The asset recon is found under reports, under the other option, and we've got asset reconciliation there. Now, very importantly, if you want to make use of asset tracking, you need to ensure that all your assets are linked to barcodes. If you're going to be making use of asset reconciliation, you need to have serialized numbers linked to your assets. If we then go to our asset register, we have a range of assets there. And for example, if I open up one of the assets, we have a barcode there, which as I say, is compulsory for Asset, re asset tracking purposes. And if I go to serial numbers, it's imperative that we have a serial number set up for assets if you are going to be using asset reconciliation. Now, let's start with asset tracking. Now, as the name implies, we are going to be tracking the status and location of our assets. Now, very importantly, as you know, is that you are able to set up locations within your asset register and then link those locations to individual assets. Now, it really is very useful, specifically with asset tracking, to have locations linked to assets, which would make the whole process of tracking them so much easier. And we can also do tracking via location. So simply a case of setting up locations and then linking those locations to your various assets. There are four basic scenarios that you could encounter with asset tracking. The first one is no variances, where it simply means that the assets that are currently on your asset register and the physical assets within your organization are in agreement, there are no differences or imbalances. The second scenario is where you've got assets on your system, however, there's a difference in locations. So the asset on your system may say that the asset exists in a certain location. However, when you go and view the assets physically, they may not exist in that location or could be found in a different location. So that's a case of locations differ. 
We then have a scenario where assets exist on your evolution accounting asset register. However, they cannot be found within a physical account or reconciliation. So you actually have a missing asset. And the fourth scenario is whereby you have assets which don't exist on your asset register. However, they physically can be found when doing a tracking or reconciliation feature. So this means is that the asset is being used. However, you don't have those details kept on your system and the asset is therefore not depreciating. And we're covering those four scenarios when we look at our various asset tracking options. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to go create an asset tracking sequence. So under transactions, asset tracking, I'm going to go add a new tracking sequence. And what you'll notice is that I've got an asset tracking number automatically generated from my defaults. There's a description, which is just the date and time when the asset tracking took place or began. Um, this description can be changed and then a reference. So I'm just going to insert my own reference. And I can also specify to delete the asset tracking after completion. We then go to the assets tab, and this is where we can specify a range of assets that are going to be used or included in our asset tracking. So I can use the from and to option, or else I can specify a location that I'm going to be using or for this asset tracking process. In this example, I'm going to use it as a location. So I've got my locations there, and I'm just going to only specify the location that I'm going to be including on this asset tracking process. Right, so we're good to go. And as you can see, I've got my asset tracking there. It tells me that the admin agent was responsible for this particular tracking. In this instance, there are four assets within this location and none of them have been counted. And at this particular point, that asset tracking is open and has not yet been completed. The next process would be go to your import. And we are now going to import some information into the asset tracking. So what has happened in the interim is that you've had um, an inspection or somebody going to go and count and review the assets within the location. They have then entered the information that they've counted or reviewed into a file, which you are now going to be importing into the asset tracking. So I'm just going to go through to my file and we can see exactly what the file looks like. So I've got a file here, which is a normal CSV file consisting of a number of columns. And we'll see exactly what the file looks like. So I'm just going to go back into tracking. And firstly, yeah, we can specify the file to be imported and also the fields which are included in the import file. Now, what we need to do is we need to go and map these fields as they appear on the import file. On my import file, I've got three, column A being the asset code, column B the location code, and column C being the barcode, because that's a compulsory field if you are going to be using asset tracking. So those three columns, and what you'll notice is that you do not need to include, or the file does not include a header record. So it's no headers, just start accessing or inserting information in your first cell. On the reconciliation screen or the tra tracking screen, I'm now going to go map this column. So I know that asset code is the first column, select it and move it over to the right hand side. Column two is the location code, and then column three being the barcode. Those are the three fields which, com which make up my uh, import file. And now I can specify the file format. It's either going to be a fixed length file or character limited. I'm going to use character limited, and then here I can simply specify the delimiter, either a tab or a comma. So I've got those details there, and now I can specify the import file. Very importantly, the file must be closed. I'm going to close the file, and we can then proceed with the import.
So I've got my details there, done the mapping, specify the file format, and now I'm just going to go browse the file to be. Okay, there are my details. Everything appears to be in order. And okay. Right, so in this instance, no errors were found, which is great. It simply means that the file mapping is correct. And I now have the ability to go and view the log files. I'm going to say yes to that. And we are now going to have the message log view appearing. And what you'll notice is that under asset tracking import, I'm going to have a log of my import. Expand this import. And what you'll notice is there's a full breakdown of the different line items, um, the file name, etc what was imported, and if there were any errors, they would be displayed here. In this particular instance, no errors, all is in order. So I can always just go verify the details under the message log viewer. Close that screen, and now I'm going to go to the process option. Import has been completed, go to process, and what you'll notice there, I've now got details about my input. So the tracking status, there's a partial match of four units. If I expand that, I'm going to have a breakdown of what was imported. Now you notice is that the screen really is split up into two areas. On this side, on the right hand side, I've got details about the system information of the asset. And on the left hand side, details about the import. So it tells me that I imported that asset code that barcode, and there's my location code on the import. And then on the system side, I've got similar details. So in this particular scenario, there are no variances or discrepancies. All the information import does correspond with my system information, and I'm good to go. So I can simply say process. And as you can see, my status is now set to matched, all four of them matched and there are no variances or discrepancies. Save, pro, save and close. And as you can see now on my tracking sequence, four have been counted, zero uncounted. It's still open. And what we can then look at is on our taskbar, there are four types of reports we can have a look at. Firstly, there's an asset tracking report. And if I open up that, I can then go view the details and specify some filters there. If I preview that, give me a breakdown of the import information, import barcode, import location, as well as the system information. So in this particular instance, zero uncounted, the system and the import assets are all matched. So there's no discrepancies there or variances. The perfect scenario, really. I can then close that. We then have a report called the Asset Location Variance Report, which isn't really applicable for this scenario. We'll come to that when we do have imports with uh, location variances. We then have the Asset Count Variance Report. So if I look at that scenario, uh, preview, and what we've got here, a breakdown of the assets together with the import count, the system count, if there were any variances, and as you can see, the status is all set to matched. So we've got an import count, which would be used to system count and no variances. We then also have the fourth report, which is asset count and value report. And if I view or preview that report, you'll see that it's going to give me details about the assets, the import count, system count, as well as the values that I've been importing. So if you think of when doing an inventory count or an inventory stock take, you would at some point print a valuation report. This is a similar report where I'm getting details about the value of my assets at a certain point in time. So a very useful report to run when doing your asset uh, tracking process. So those are our four reports that are available. And then once I've checked those reports, 
go to complete and I'm now going to go it's a tracking process. Now, very important, a warning appears informing a couple of things. Firstly, is that it's very important that you print a variance report before completing the count. So if there are any variances, that you do have record of that before the count is completed or the track is completed. And just a notification there about the changes in locations, which we'll come to on our next scenario. Right, so I can obviously post information a certain day. And if I say okay, there, obviously once I've comp or printed my variance report, okay to that, and I can now go complete the asset tracking count. Right, updated, set to completed, and we can move on. Now, the second scenario that you may encounter is where the locations of assets differ. So, for example, we've linked locations to assets on our system. However, when a tracking or a count is being done, the asset is either in a different location or can't be found within the location where it should be. So, add once again, and we're going to create a new track. And once again, specify from and to range for our assets. And in this particular instance, I'm going to use the administration. I'm going to do a count in the administration office. And OK there. I then have my new track available. And I'm now going to go do an import. So similar scenario. And let's just go open up our file, which we're intending to import. OK, so there, once again, we've got our asset code, location code, and also the barcode. Now, if I go to my fixed assets, I just want you to notice a scenario here is if I go to asset number D001, the system tells me that the location description is the administration office. However, in our import file, when the count or the track was done, we noticed that this particular asset was located in the kitchen and not the administration office as um, stated on the asset register. So just be aware of that. And I'm just going to go into my asset track. Right, there we go. And import. Right, so once again, map those fields. I know it's asset code, location code, and then the barcode, specify the file format. And I'm just going to go close the file before we do the import. And browse for the file to be imported. Right, so there we go. Got that information there. And OK. No errors. And now we can go to this option and see the scenario. So process. And let us expand that. Now, what you'll notice there, we've got our four assets. And as you can see, the top three, no problem. Import location code being admin. System location code being admin. The problem comes in with asset D001. So the system says it should be an admin office. However, the import says it found in the kitchen. Right, so there we have a discrepancy where there's a variance or difference in location. Click on the process button. And what you'll see now, we've got an option there on the top that says three matches. However, there's a partial match for one of those assets. And as we know, it's asset D001. Now, what you notice there is that if I highlight that asset, the option that says location adjustment now becomes available. Or this scenario or this feature is very useful. It allows us to now go and update the location of the asset within our register. So I'm simply going to highlight the asset, 
say location adjustment and then it's going to give me information that the location of the asset is now going to be updated from admin to kitchen. Say OK there and it's now been updated. So I can say save and close and let's just go check at our reports now. So once again, the asset tracking report for admin, preview, and we've got a scenario there as follows, right? Top three assets, no problem there. System and import, locations are matched, no problem. However, over here, we've got a problem with the actual location. It gives me a breakdown of there's a partial match and we've got a difference in location. So very useful to run this report before completion to see if there are any differences. Right. Now, the next option is going to be our asset location report variance. And if I preview that, it tells me once again that there's a difference. And it tells me that for this particular asset, we did go and process location adjustment, which is going to be updated on our asset, on our physical asset, when we complete the tracking. Right, got the details there. And I can then go look at the next report, count variance. So once again, import count, system count is the same. There are no variances. The status on one of the assets just being a partial match, simply because the locations differ. Other than that, we've got the asset available and we can continue. And then finally, we've got that value count and preview and We've then got the information about the value of the asset which are imported compared to the system value and no variances there, etc. Right, so we can now go and complete. Okay, so complete, and very important, it tells me that there is going to be a change on the asset tracking location on that particular asset. And obviously, once again, ensuring that we have printed the variance report for reference purposes. OK. The completion is done. And let's just go and check on the asset. Under my assets, if I go to D001, you'll see now that that asset has been moved to the kitchen location where from the administration based on the fact that we used the location adjustment on our tracking. And we've also updated the asset location within our register. The next scenario we can, we do come across is a situation where we have an Asset register. However, when doing a count or tracking, the asset can't be found. Right, so once again, a new tracking. And in this particular example, we're going to go and do it for the storage warehouse. Right, complete four assets in this particular location, four uncounted, and let's just go and check at the import file.
Right, so as you can see there is that the tracking says that there are four assets within this location. However, when the physical inspection or tracking was done or count, only three assets were found in this particular location. So it's a case of an asset being missing. I'm going to close down this file and then we can do the import. So let's just go back in there. We've got our new tracking and I'm going to say import. Uh, we know that the mapping is asset code, location code, and then the barcode. Got our details there for the file format and browse for the file which you're going to be importing. Okay, import, no errors, and we're now going to go to the process feature. Right, we'll just a couple of options here. So firstly, we've got a partial match, those three assets, no problem there. We've been able to find them and they're all where they should be. No differences in location. However, the problem comes in with one asset which is unmatched. So what we have here is on the right hand side, the system says is that in this location, asset code P001 should be there. There's my system barcode and it should be in the warehouse. However, if you look on the left hand side with regards to the import options, it couldn't find the import, couldn't find the asset code, no serial number, no barcode, no location. So this particular scenario is that we have a missing asset which is on our register depreciating, however, we don't physically have that asset, or we cannot be found. Right, I'm going to say save and close. And let's just go look at the scenario there. Right, so we're now going to be specifying. There we go. Preview. And what you see there is we've got a filtered unmatched. So in this particular instance is unmatched. We can't find the asset. Therefore, there was no import barcode, import location. The other three are matched, no problem there. In this particular scenario, the locations aren't really relevant, so no need to run that report. Asset count variance report. Let's just see what that report's going to give us. Right, so here we've got a scenario where asset P001 is unmatched. So the system count says there should be one, import count says there's zero, couldn't find the asset, we've then got a discrepancy. And then if you look at our counted value, preview, and what you'll notice is that we've now got a count value variance, simply because the system says this is a value of my asset in my register. However, I can't find the asset, so therefore we've got a deficit of that value, which is a value of the missing asset. So as you can see, these reports do give you a great deal of information based on different scenarios that you may encounter when tracking your assets. Close that, and we can then go to complete. And obviously, once again, ensure that you've got your variance report printed. Uh, in this particular example, no need to, there's no differences on your locations. Okay, complete. And that's our asset tracking, asset tracking report or process completed. Our next scenario is where you have an instance where you physically have the asset. However, the asset is not on your system, which means that it's not depreciating, although it may be used within your organization. A new, we're going to go add a new asset track.
and we're now going to specify the new location. So you're going to go check the assets in the factory and we're okay with that. Okay, once again, there's four assets there, four uncounted. And let's just go look at the import file that's going to be imported. So we're going to go to the factory. This is the file that we've gone to go check and review those assets within that location. Right, so remember is that the count says there should be four assets within that location. However, we found an additional asset being X001. It's in the factory and there's my barcode for the assets. So we've got an additional asset we never knew we had within the organization. Okay, close the file and we can then do the import. Right, so import and Asset code, location, barcode, got the file format, and I'm going to go find the file that's going to be applicable for the scenario. Right, there we go. And say OK to that. The process. Right, there's a couple of different scenarios here. So as you can see, we've got four assets, no problem there. They all correspond with what's in the system. System information, import information, all agree. The problem comes in, you've got one unmatched asset. So the import asset code being that, X001, import barcode, there we go, import location code, and there we go. And then if you look at the system side, we've got no information there. So as you can see, it's a case of the assets physically available. However, those details have not been kept on the system and the asset is being used, however, not depreciating. Right. So we can say process, save and close. And let's just look at the report. So we've got our asset tracking report there. Preview. Right, so all four were matched, no problem there. And let's just go look at the asset locations not applicable, the count variance report. We've picked up an unmatched asset, so all those are in order. The problem comes in with X001, status being unmatched. So import count says there's one imported. System is zero because we don't have the details on our register. And then obviously have a variance. And we then go look at the counted or the value report. And as you can see, there's our asset where we can't, we, we don't have it on register. So as you can see, import one, system count zero, okay? There's no system count value simply because the asset doesn't exist on register. And we can then insert the details there. So as you can see, we've got that information. Right. So we can close that, and those are four scenarios. So just do a quick recap. Obviously, asset tracking, very importantly, that you've got barcodes set up for your assets, and also quite useful to have locations. You've got the ability to use automatic numbering for your tracking. And then also, just very important, is that those four scenarios where you've got no variances, which means that system assets as well as your import assets or physical assets agree. The import is done. There's no variances or differences. The other scenario being whereby 
the location difference. So your asset on the system is supposed to be in a certain location. However, when a physical count or track is being done, the asset cannot be found within that location. We also then have that option where we can go and update the locations by using the location adjustments feature. And we can update the location on the asset on the register automatically once we complete the asset tracking. We then have this next scenario, which is assets which are not which are not are imported. Simply means is that you've got an asset within your system which is depreciating. However, when tracking the asset, you can't find the asset, so it's a missing asset. And then our last scenario is where you have an asset which is not in the system, so therefore you physically have the asset within your organization. However, you can't find the asset when, um, however, you don't have the asset within your system. So therefore, the asset isn't depreciating, although it is being used within the organization. So those are the four basic scenarios when it comes to asset tracking. Now, the next feature we have is under reports, and that is the asset reconciliation feature. Now, if I go to more under other, I've got asset reconciliation. And this can be done in two methods, either asset reconciliation by serial numbers or asset reconciliation by asset code based on number of units. So let's just see exactly how the process works. Now, very important, as I mentioned previously, is that in order for this to use this asset reconciliation feature, you need to ensure that your assets are linked to serial numbers. So I'm going to be using the asset reconciliation by serial numbers. But let's just check a couple of scenarios first. So I'm going to go through my import file. And let's just go open up our import file. Notice here is in this scenario, it consists of two columns. So firstly, I've got serialized number, and then I've got my asset code. Let's just look at asset L001. So I'm saying is that I've gone to go do a reconciliation. I'm going to go check and on asset L001, this is a serial number linked to my asset. Within Sage 2 and Devolution, I'm simply going to go through to my asset and I'm going to go look at asset L001. There we go. Edit the asset. The barcode's there. And if I go to my asset serial number, you'll see I've got a serial number linked. Now look at that serial number is, my system says it should be S1101. On my import file, I have, it appears that on the tracking, that 1108 serial number. Right, so let's just go check how that's that scenario. And back to asset reconciliation. to the right report this time. So asset reconciliation by serial numbers. I'm going to say import and results. So this particular example, I'm going to use code to delimited and I'm going to use a comma or a tab, depending on which type of file I'm using. And once again, you'll notice is that serial numbers in this particular instance are a compulsory field, so they must be included. And if need be, I can also add the asset code, which I've done in my file format. Browse, and I'm now going to browse for the file. There we go. And I'm going to go and import that. So file has been specified. My fields look in order, delimiter, and so, and let's just wait for this to complete. So now I can go see what the outcome is. So there's my location, and I'm going to go do a preview. And what you'll see there is that I've got the scenario. So there we go. 
I've got my four assets. However, this particular asset, L001, numbers not match to scanned records. So as you can see, once it don't correspond. So this scenario could be perhaps that um, uh, the wrong serial number tag or the wrong asset tag has been linked to the physical asset. And that's a situation that would need to be investigated. Why is an asset linked to the wrong serial number? And I could I've got the ability to show duplicate serial numbers, or I can say ignore match serial numbers. So if I use the ignore match serial numbers option and I preview the report again, it's just going to give me details about where there's an unmatched serial number. So in this particular instance, I don't want to see assets where the numbers do correspond. I just want to see where there are differences or variances with regards to the serial numbers. So as you can see, a very useful report to run, and I can see instances where there are differences in the serial numbers. That's our scenario. And then we have another scenario, which is the asset reconciliation based on asset code and number of units. Now let us see what that scenario looks like. So once again, I'm going to go open up a file that I'm going to be importing, and let go to the, this particular file. Okay, so what I have here is I've got my asset code and my serial numbers. Now, look at asset L001 again. We know that this asset is linked to serial number S1101. So remember, we happen to have found another asset with the tag L001, which is linked to another serial number. So we've got an additional serial number there. So just make a note of that. And I'm going to go close. And let's just convert back to our asset reconciliation. So let's just go through to reports. And we're then going to go through to asset reconciliation. And I'm going to use asset reconciliation by asset code. So import and results. Right, so in this particular example, I'm going to use the comment limited again. And in this particular instance, acid code is a compulsory field. And if need be, I can add serial number, which I've done. So I'm going to tick that box and browse for the file which I'm going to be importing. There we go. Say so OK to, to import. And we can check the results and the outcome. Right, so there we go. Preview. And once again, you've picked up discrepancies there. So we've got four assets where the system numbers, the serial numbers, and the actual units do agree. So system unit count is one. We've imported one asset, no differences there. The problem comes in with that particular asset, L001, where the system says we've got one unit, we've actually scanned in two. It's obviously a difference. So once again, this scenario could be, as I mentioned, whereby you've got, for example, in a good example would be office chairs. We've maybe got a set of office chairs. They're all linked to one asset number, but you've got more than one unit, and you've then linked different serial numbers to those particular chairs that are made up of the one asset. So that could be a, a scenario where you've got this particular setup or differences with the units and the serial numbers. So there would be an instance where you'd need to go look up or investigate why the scenario occurred, and then obviously amend that situation either on the asset register as required. So as you can see, there really are a variety of options that you can make use of with regards to 
um, reconciling and tracking your assets. We've got the asset tracking with regards to this, those various scenarios. The asset reconciliation, which is based on the serial number platform, either by serial numbers or number of units on serial numbers. So that really is the ability for you to keep track of your assets and ensuring that the assets that are physically on your asset register and with the new organization do correspond and there are no discrepancies or variances. Thank you for tuning into this webinar. I do hope the content has been useful. It's over and out for me. Thank you and goodbye.